Welcome to My Long Island TV. From Manhasset to Montauk, we have traveled our communities to bring you the following events. I'm your host, Waldo Cabrera. My Long Island TV starts now. Every year, the Railroad Museum of Long Island puts on an educational forum for the people of Suffolk County so that they can come and learn something about their railroad. Uh, I have roughly a little less than 400 slides. Uh, Don said that most people that are here today have to be home by breakfast. <laughs> Mr. John Kilbride, he's been a historian of Long Island railroading for many years and a longtime employee of Amtrak, retired. And like many people who love railroads, he spent his youth going about taking photographs throughout Long Island and the Long Island Railroad as a company was a favorite of his. I'm hoping to bring up today at least what happened in the old days and maybe people can say, yeah, why don't we try that again? Or how come that disappeared? Or how come we don't give that a priority or consideration anymore? I was born and raised in Belrose. And when I came back to Long Island, I had a summer job on Shelter Island. And I started capturing the Greenport service. And then it expanded, and I said, you know, when I heard that they were going to make plans and changes, I said, I better document a lot of this so that we have it on film. I'm going to talk about the Long Island Railroad from about 1975 to 1995, before the present equipment was procured by the railroad, before the platforms were high-leveled, because it lost its charm, in my mind, uh, when all of that started to happen. In the old days, people used to have a, a sort of a quality approach to their station. They'd keep it up, you know, keep it beautified. That was a connection with the outside world. And it was something about living in, potentially in Mattituck, where you you could get on a train and go pretty well anywhere in the United States through Penn Station. So it had its charm. What did you think of all this? It just brought me back. It brought me back to when I remember riding the railroad, when it looked like that. Do you have a favorite memory of you on the railroad? I remember going into the city, uh, going to see the circus when I was very young. And I remember that the engines were very, you know, noisy and very big, and I was very small. It was great. It was like going back through albums of your grandmother's, you know. I'm not as versed, of course, as Mr. Kilbride. But I do love trains. Anything like struck a chord with you? Steam locomotives. Because, you know, we're rebuilding the number 39 steam locomotive. That's our little jewel in our collection. And that one is very close to my heart, as well as 1556. We have that in our, uh, at Riverhead. And then, of course, we have Jaws out at uh, Greenport. So the collections that we have are the ones that I like best. <laughs> What do you think people are going to be looking at 20 years from now, nostalgically? Oh dear, probably the double-deckers, I assume. I often wonder what the next generation of rail historians will be like, what they have to study, because it certainly has lost something. Yeah, everybody talks about train delays, they don't talk about the heritage of making that car, or where it came from, or the aesthetics even inside of it, or, you know, everybody complains about either the service or the fares. To me, there's more than that. 